Hello, dear friends. Hope you've all been peaceful in the Lord during the past week. Blessings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Revelation Bible Study number 28 from last day's ministry here at WGM Church. Before we continue with today's study, let's begin with the words from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let us continue to study the prophetic words spoken by our Lord today found in the book of Revelation. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. He can come at any time. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, all saved believers from 2,000 years ago up to now hope in the same thing as stated in Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they left behind their old worldly life. There was no going back, and their only hope was the land of Canaan. Their only option was the land of Canaan with Joshua leading the way. Similarly, those who are now saved, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven of all sins and born again through the Holy Spirit, are the people who have already left the world behind. The body may be alive, but the spirit is as spoken in Ephesians 2 verse 6, sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He sat us down spiritually. That is why the Lord's body is in heaven and the bodies of the God's saved children are still on this earth. But because we are connected through the Holy Spirit, we become a spiritual body and Jesus is the head. Therefore, the church is the body of Christ. Now our hope is that the Lord will come and restore heaven and earth, as his will of heaven and earth be done on earth, as it is in heaven. So that heaven and earth will become a new heaven and a new earth in Christ, where there no longer is sin, no devil, no evil person. The born-again children of God will live eternally in New Jerusalem. However, the Bible clearly states that the saved but unregenerate Jews become the remnant as eternal nation of priests on earth, while the twelve apostles sit on the thrones of the twelve tribes to rule over them forever. We must understand the Bible correctly. Instead of ascending to heaven unconditionally, when the Lord comes to earth, the saints also come down together as there is a thousand year period of reign with the Lord. This is the reward the Lord gives to the born again saints today as much as they have worked on this earth. This reward speaks of sovereignty. As a royal priesthood, 
those who acted as priests by leading unbelievers, sinners, and hopeless people to Jesus Christ through the gospel and opening the way for their sins to be forgiven are said to ultimately become kings and rule together with the Lord. These countless saints will come down to earth following the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as recorded in Revelation chapter 19. The Apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Then Jude verse 14 testified of the saints coming down with the Lord. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. If we are unaware of the future events as taught in the Bible, we cannot enjoy peace even for a moment while we are living on earth. As the peace the body provides will only last for a moment, we must live our lives enjoying the peace given by the Lord which no one can take away. Today we will continue from Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Here we have the 144,000. These are the male virgins undefiled with women who first appeared in chapter 7. They received the seal of God, the invincible evangelists of the tribulation age. In Revelation chapter 14, they finish their mission and go up to the heavenly Mount Zion. They have their father's name on their foreheads. Let's study the word as we read verse by verse, starting with verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Revelation 14 verse 4. The 144,000 chosen. These are the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. They are neither Jehovah's Witnesses, nor Mormons, nor Seventh-day Adventists. It should be noted that these are unmarried men who are not defiled with women. They are not Catholic priests or the monks. They are not male Christians, nor are they the Bride of Christ. Nowhere in the Bible are Christians mentioned as these male virgins. Christians, the body of Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 11.2, is a chaste version to Christ. There are many churches and born-again saints, but the Bible refers them as one. The born-again saints form the body of the Lord. Therefore, there is only one church in the whole world. There are many local churches spread out in various regions. Therefore, no matter how long you've been attending the church, those who are not born again cannot become bodily members of the Lord. A person who is not born again cannot be a member of the church. Being a member of the church is a member of the body of the Lord. And those who have not yet received eternal life cannot be members of the church, even if they come to the church and hold offices. You can't just make anyone a member. Traditional churches in the United States do not enlist unregenerate people as members of their churches. However, many churches register visitors as long as they attend. We must establish the church, which is the body of God, who have received life and have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 25 A very well known parable of the ten virgins. We need to understand this correctly. Here's verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Not one, but likened unto ten virgins, plural, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. They aren't going to get married. They're going out to meet the bridegroom. Then in verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, 
the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. These are the Jewish saints who will rise during the Great Tribulation. These are the virgins who endure to the end in the times of tribulation and are raptured to meet the bridegroom when he comes. They are the bridesmaids. There is one bride and several bridesmaids, all of whom are Jews. These are the Jewish virgins who greet Christ as he comes with the church. They are not members of the chaste bride, the church, which constitute the body of God. They aren't the members of the church in the age of grace today. In a wedding ceremony, the bridesmaids enter, then the groom, and later we see the beautiful bride entering. Then everybody else stands up and applaud. The bride is the most precious thing the Lord sees. So these Jewish virgins are who endure to the end in the end times of the tribulation who kept the law of Moses, who sang the song of Moses. Last episode, we read the words of Deuteronomy 32. That's the song of Moses. These are the Jewish virgins who come to meet Jesus when he returns to judge and take possession of the earth. The Bible was not written only for the Gentiles in the church age. The passage we are studying now, however, has nothing to do with the church. The church is already raptured into heaven. It's out of here. You have to divide the Bible dispensationally and study the words of truth. Just as there was a dispensation of Garden of Eden, there was the age of conscience. Then there was the age of the law. We are currently living in the age of grace. The age of tribulation will follow and that once that age ends, the Lord will come and judge. Afterwards, the millennial kingdom will be established. So therefore, we must divide the words properly according to dispensations. God provided grace not only in this age of grace, but also in other ages, so that everyone was able to survive. For reference, the word virgins show up at Psalm 45, 14. Most of the Psalms are written by psalmists, including David, through the Holy Spirit about the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming, the millennial kingdom, and the eternal world. When David prayed, he prayed for himself, and Holy Spirit took possession of his mouth and had him prophesy everything that would happen in the future. Upon his resurrection, the Lord tells his disciples, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Luke 24, 44. The entire Old Testament, including the Pentateuch of Moses, is all about Jesus Christ. How he dies after his first coming, how he is resurrected and how he will come again to judge. Also how he rules us and how he will live with God's children in the eternity. So the words found in John 14 verse 2, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Mean that he is going to prepare New Jerusalem. However, before living there, the Lord comes with God's children, the chaste bride, and rewards them as queen to rule with the Lord as much as, as they suffered for the Lord here on earth. Perhaps only then you will know, oh, that's what the words meant. Kind of hard to imagine now. The Bible is mysterious indeed. That's why after the Apostle Paul visited the third heaven, he said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8.18 The things we like now, the things that we consider delicious, no matter how wonderful the things we are enjoying currently, they cannot be compared to then. I can't imagine the happiness and joy of being in a really clean state 
without sin on that very day. When we live on this earth and suffer, we taste a joy little by little when He gives us peace through the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord told His disciples to bear fruit in John chapter 15. Branches do that, that do not bear fruit are cut down and burned. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. John 15 verse 11 What is the joy of the Lord? It's the perfect joy. It's not a joy that depends on circumstances and feelings. The joy of the Lord is something we can't imagine, and we will come to know it when we take off our bodies and are changed, resurrected, and raptured. Therefore, as we look forward to that day, we must keep this faith until the end. Even in the world, even if the world and our situations may get worse, and live as the chaste virgin, the chaste bride of the Lord, without compromising with the adulterous world. Here's a passage from Psalm 45, verse 13 and 14. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Here we see the virgins again, just like the ten virgins, plural, in Matthew 25. We see that the virgins in Psalm 45 are the daughters of the king. The virgins follow the bride of Christ, the queen. They are the bridesmaids. They are not the bride of Christ. Now we can understand that the 144,000 virgins are not Catholic priests, they're not the Jehovah Witnesses, nor the Seventh-day Adventists, or the Mormons. Also in Song of Solomon chapter 6, you will find that there are the King's Bride and the Bridesmaids. Throughout the Bible, all the words to unlocking the book of Revelation can be found. Also, we can understand the Old Testament through the book of Revelation. Let's turn to Song of Solomon chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. There are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. There's obviously one singled out person here who is but one. My dove, my undefiled is but one. It's the church, the chaste virgin, the bride. Therefore, born again saints must prepare until the Lord returns, being washed with the word and the Lord's blood, anointed by the Holy Spirit. We should obey the word and not be stained by the world. But it's really sad and unfortunate to see especially those who have been saved these days who mindlessly follow the world. Like the words in Ephesians, we should always be cleansed with the washing of water by the word and become a truly chaste version. Still, older saints know this and they're pretty good at the bridal adornment. Using the heavenly cosmic pro uh, cosmetic product, the blood of the Lord, they're pretty good at cleansing themselves. There is the water of life in the Word, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit that is more fragrant than any perfume in the world. Then the Holy Spirit tells us through the Apostle Paul, And be not drunken with wine, wherein is excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. That one person from Song of Solomon is the Bride of Christ. The virgins of the ch uh, Revelation chapter 14 are clearly identified in the authorized 1611 edition, the King James Bible. However, other translations or revised versions of the Bible do not represent that correctly. Again, from Revelation 14, Verse 4 and 5, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. 
These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. This passage is right before, it's seen right before the second coming. It is just before the return of the Lord. In tribulation, as in Matthew 24, people who are left behind must endure to the end. However, we can realize through the book of Revelation that the tribulation is so great that no one can be saved unless the Lord shortens the days. And even in Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, The sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. He also said the moon would become as blood. Now we've had some crimson red lunar eclipses in the past two years, haven't we? It's not a coincidence. Why should people endure to the end during the tribulation? It's to avoid receiving the mark of the beast. In order to not receive the mark, those who are left behind must overcome Satan's temptation even if it means to dig up and eat plant roots from the ground for survival. The North Korean underground church uh, members are doing just that, even today. During the tribulation, people are saved by keeping the law of Moses and believing in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Because they are not born again of the Holy Spirit, they have to endure with works until the end. Now and today, in the age of grace, we are saved by grace through faith. If you just believe, you will receive it as gift from God. Truly realizing that I am a sinner, that I can't be saved, no matter how hard I try, I can't overcome my sin and my insights are full of it. There was no way without believing in Jesus Christ. And if you just call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. On the cross, the thief on one side of Jesus Christ realized this and tells the thief on the other side that we die for what we have done, but this one is innocent. Believing that such an innocent man died for him, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 42 and 43. That man got saved. He wasn't baptized, but he was saved the moment he confessed that he was a sinner. So, when the time of tribulation arrives, there is no longer the gospel of grace. The book of Revelation says that angels preach the everlasting gospel, and the content of that gospel is, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. In those days, People will be so evil, they'll be pointing their fingers at the sky and blame God. We see similar words found in Matthew 22, chapter 24 and 25. That's why if you don't discern the age correctly, you'll confuse the words in Matthew 24. Since the Lord spoke of the three events at the same time during the tribulation, the fall of Jerusalem, the rapture, the second coming, it is impossible to understand and you're bound to get confused without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. However, you'll clearly understand once you rightly divide the word. Let us continue with verse 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with the loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. As mentioned earlier, it is 
not the gospel of grace that is being preached during the tribulation, but the everlasting gospel preached by angels. Right now, Christians preach the gospel of grace, but during that time, no Christians are left on the ground. So angels flying across the sky preaches this gospel. But this isn't the same gospel Paul preached. Again, in today's age of grace, there is only the gospel of Christ. That's why Apostle Paul warns us, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Galatians 1.8 An angel in heaven preaches the everlasting gospel in Revelation. But we can't preach that now. This is what the angels preach after the saints, the Christians, are raptured. Right now, angels cannot preach the gospel of grace, for they have no experience of being saved from sin. They cannot testify anything because they have never received the grace of Jesus Christ. However, sinners like us give away freely what we have received because we have received His grace. It's testifying, witnessing. This is preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel is to testify of the grace that I have received. Jesus Christ forgave my sins, and I received them, and the Holy Spirit came into me, and now I am born again. Now my hope is in heaven. That's it. It's simple. But why can't people evangelize? It's one of the two. Either they haven't been born again, or you're lost, you lost your powers because you didn't pray. How about you, dear listener? Do you have the hope of meeting the Lord if you were to leave this world right this moment? Your answer should be 100%, not 99%. Why? Those who have the Lord in them know for sure. This isn't achieved from someone teaching you. Someone once asked, am I saved? So I tell them, it seems that you have not been saved yet. Please receive salvation and dwell in assurance. When the Holy Spirit comes, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy, he clearly prophesies this, I am saved. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You, here in this verse, are the saved people. Those who are saved know that. Regardless of how long you've been going to church, even if you hold a pastoral position, you cannot know this unless you are born again. The Pharisees of Old Testament times were all pastors and doctors of the Bible at the time. However, they were not born again. And only one person, Nicodemus, humbled himself and listened to the word of the Lord and was born again. We get to see through the Bible that he rebuked the Pharisees when they criticized Lord Jesus. And also, when Lord Jesus died, he brought about a hundred pound worth mixture of myrrh and aloes to be used for the Lord's burial. If Galatians chapter 1 speaks of the gospel of grace from Matthew 1 to John 21, then Jesus Christ did not tell the Jews, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 this is because Matthew chapter 1 through chapter 27 is the age of the law which is before the death of the testator, the Lord Jesus Christ. Take note, the New Testament came into effect after Jesus shed his blood and died. The New Testament of the Bible is New Testament made of blood of Jesus Christ, not the blood of animals as in the age of law. However, not all of Matthew 1 through Revelation chapter 22 in the New Testament of the Bible are the gospel of grace. Until the Lord died, the 
gospel of grace had not been preached. And on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, the same gospel of grace had not yet been preached to the Jews. To the Jews, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 uh, verse 38 was preached by Apostle Peter. However, in the age of grace, through the Apostle Paul, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Acts 16, 31 was preached. Let's continue with some more. When Jesus was on earth, he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 10 to go only unto the Israelites. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10, verse 5 and 6. In any case, he preached the gospel of the kingdom as the king of the Jews. It was not the gospel of grace during this time. The Lord did not preach the gospel of grace at his first coming. So, the gospel in Galatians 1 is not the same gospel preached by the angel in Revelation 14. The gospel of grace, believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, is preached. Preach anything other than that gospel, be it a man or an angel, let him be accursed. Now let's see what Apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Notice he didn't say in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What did he say? But Jesus Christ. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises uh, for the promise is unto you and to your children, the house of Israel, and to all that are afar off, even as many of the Lord our God shall call. Acts two thirty eight and thirty nine. The entire text context of Acts two is given to the house of Israel. At that time, on the day of Pentecost, he spoke only to the Israelites in various regions, about 14 places of Israel. And the Apostle Peter said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Even the gospel in Acts 2 was before the gospel of grace was preached. They also knew the Holy Spirit, but they killed Jesus Christ. We're talking about the Jews. So that is why Apostle Peter preached the gospel that the Holy Spirit would come only when one repents and is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul speaks of God's gospel of grace in Galatians 1, which was written several years after the event of the Pentecost. That explains why Apostle Peter did not know what this gospel of grace was during the event of the Pentecost. The Apostle Paul received this gospel of grace and taught it unto other apostles, including Peter. In Acts 15.11, Peter, upon witnessing Gentiles being saved at the house of Cornelius, who was a Gentile, by the way, he finally realized and said this, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Ultimately, the Apostle Paul taught this gospel unto Apostle Peter. It's because the Lord directly gave Paul this gospel of grace. There's a transitional period between the Pentecost and the gospel of grace of Apostle Paul. Also, when the Lord is alive, Matthew chapter 1 to 27 is also a transitional period. That's why we must know and teach this correctly. We are currently at the end of the age of grace. Folks, if you do not receive grace now, you will walk straight into tribulation and suffer tremendously. So by studying the book of Revelation, first of all, I can confirm 
that I myself have been saved, then have the zeal to preach the gospel unto others, to be filled with the heart of the Lord. The book of Revelation is by no means frightening. It's scary for the unsaved. But those who have clearly been born again by the Holy Spirit are not scared by these words. Rather, it's a reassured gospel of blessing. Oh, our Lord is taking me away before the tribulation comes. Therefore, if you do not understand the Bible, you will become afraid for nothing. You must study the Bible. Now, if you leave this world today, are you 100% sure you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ? You have to be certain. Here's 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 through 12. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ that you will receive the Lord after hearing these words receive salvation and enter into eternal blessings